According to my golf spy, 60% of golfers are now, are now interested in testing graphite shafts, a huge revolution about to come to the golf industry. Today, we're exploring some of the aftermarket options and see if there's any real benefits to them. Hey golfers, Danny Farrell here, partnered up with Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitters at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today, we're about to tackle some of the revolution in the game of golf. Lighter, stiffer, graphite options, right? We, I touched earlier on kind of my golf spy, somebody we kind of trust in terms of um, customer feedback and response in the golf industry. They're claiming 60%. So six out of 10 of players want to test graphite shafts, but they don't all have the same kind of profile they used to. The last stigma, it's just for players with slower swing speeds. You know, the, the higher speed guys, you know, previous years, they really haven't had anything for them to make that change into it. But today, we're going to answer that question. Yeah, I mean, you go back the last few years, you think about graphite golf shafts, and someone, you think that you're fitting them for a graphite golf shaft, they think, oh, it's going to be light, it's going to be really flexible, right. and I'm basically going to lose control of the club head. Right. But let's face it, some of these golf shafts we're going to test today, the, the, the torque is actually lower than other steel golf shafts out 100%. there, which is which is amazing to think, think about. So there's definitely some technology that really goes into the development of these iron shafts. Absolutely. You know, you talked about torque. I mean, looking at kind of the steel fiber, kind of the iconic one out of the mix here, there's a reason why it's a premium golf shaft. When you look at all the fibers, steel fiber says 59 miles of fiber goes into every golf shaft, 59 miles. So of course, there's gonna have a little bit of a premium cost to that too but they can make the walls of these shafts so tight and narrow, that's where the torque comes from. And that's why for me this year, I'm sure viewers have seen my story of switching from 130 gram extra steel, um, extra stiff steel golf shafts to the MMT 105 this year. And it's been a very easy, simple transition. So I'm interested to see shafts that we don't get to play with day to day, see if there's any real benefit to those or not for players. Right, yeah, it's, it's going to be a very unique test. I'm excited to see how they perform, because I know you've talked about the benefit for you going to, for some, something heavy to something light, yes. but also still having that stability. Yeah. Probably feels a lot better on the miss hits, probably feels a lot better on the body playing a graphite golf mm -hmm. shaft. Mm -hmm. But we're talking graphite, we're, we're not talking light here, we're talking of a range of what, 95 grams to about 110 grams? Yeah, and they're all you know designed to be that low torque, so not the flimsy tip section where they used to be, something more stable. So it should be very interesting to test here, kind of shaft versus shaft. But some of them are in two extra stiff like mine. Other ones are just an extra stiff across the board. So it's gonna be interesting, not only from a field perspective, but also what TrackMan has us tell us too. Right, so tell me about the test. What, what do we got, what do we got heads wise? What do we got, six irons, right? Correct, yep. So a little bit different for us. Normally we test seven irons, but these six irons were all grabbed from kind of the vault. So for players that are just getting into thinking, hey, I might want to test a graphite iron shaft, this is a great kind of inexpensive way to get into that game without having a fitting involved, just to test head to head. So you know, we're going to lead out with kind of my gamer irons right now, the Apex 21 uh, with the MMT 105 TX, that all the other heads are the exact same. We're jumping to another brand. We really haven't done much testing with PXG, the 0311 T. So the Gen 2 stuff from back from 2016. So we're taking a little step back, but a step forward in terms of the graphite shafts going in there. Yeah, so we've got the loft, the lie angle, the exact same, the same club head. We're just doing a pure shaft test to compare how these unique premium golf shafts work out. Especially. Absolutely, especially at lighter weight. So let's jump in and get to work. I'm excited to see some shots. Solid swing. Pretty good there. That was pretty good there. Okay, so Danny, you just hit five shots with your current six iron. You have the Apex, right? Correct, yep, Apex 21. Apex 21, you've got the MMT 105X shaft? Yeah, the TX. The yep. TX? Yep. Okay. How does that one you know, feel at impact with regards to, do you feel it more in the tip? Do you feel it more in the butt end? Do you feel like it just very stable across the entire club? I, I think it was important, you know, the reason why I went into these, because the feel is very similar for me going from the extra stiff steel, where it was very stout kind of down at the tip. 
So that's where I feel this too. So it's nice and light, more effortless for me, but nice and stable down at the tip section. Okay. So ball play is pretty similar to what I have been playing. Now remember, I always play my irons weak, weaker than what this is now. So I just bent it to match the PXG. So I know height and spin are going to be low. But other than that, dispersion is exactly what I expect out of this. Right. I mean, yeah, touching on, on that spin, yeah, you do spin the ball a little bit less than other players may a little bit there yeah. too. And that's why you do have a weaker loft. Yep. Um, but everyone swings differently. And that's why it's important to just know this is a comparison of yeah. you swinging different clubs with the same golf swing. Yep. That's how we're comparing these. Yeah. Um, but yeah, club speed, 86 miles an hour when you're hitting, hitting that. Decent amount of speed, good efficiency. I mean, keep in mind, this is a six iron, but still very, very good efficiency. Launch angle around 15 degrees, carry 185 going 201. So yeah. six iron's gonna not stop quite as far as so say a seven iron would right. or an eight iron or, or a wedge. Right. Um, but you hit it pretty good. Pretty yeah. good ball speed, very good efficiency. Not bad. Let's see what the other ones have to say. All right, what do you wanna try first? Let's go steel fiber first. Let's go Get steel the, fiber. The heaviest option out of the out of the way first. And when you say heaviest option compared to yours, now is is the MMT right around at 105? Yeah, it's right it around is. 105. So jump it up to 110. I can already feel the difference. Okay. I mean, we're only talking three dollar bills difference in overall weight, but the feel of you know club head to shaft, completely different. All right. Well, I'm interested to get your thoughts on the feel difference here. Okay, so talk to me about the uh, steel fiber golf shaft. Can you feel a difference at impact Is there a, at, at all? Not necessarily at impact, but more so as the club's coming down. Okay. I can feel a little bit more weight there. So, the transition you know, piece? Like yeah. The transition? Okay. Yeah, kind of on the way down, you can tell I'm a, really, I'm a loader. I really pulled down on the shaft itself. So this is what I felt like I couldn't pull as much, or it was kind of pulling me down okay. with it. So it's a little bit harder for me to square up, but love the consistency kind of, of um, the carry distance too with that. Right, and yeah, the, the right shot, left shot, might be shafted a little bit, but also use the air. There's right. a couple you left that face angle a little bit more open coming through. Yeah. Essentially you just matched up your, your path and your face angle though, just little pushes essentially yep. what you hit. Yep. The other three were pretty nice there over to the left side. Let's see how the numbers stack up comparing them. Um, efficiency, same, 142, 142. Yep. Uh, you were swinging the steel fiber just a little bit faster, getting a little bit more ball speed. Okay. Um, spin a little bit higher. Now a little baby, a little higher because they have that couple to the right. Right. That's probably what we're seeing there. Yeah. But otherwise, pretty, pretty good numbers overall between them. Um, because the ball did just stay a little to the right with that golf shaft, your stopping power was just a little bit faster. Sure. Took a 188 going to a ones of 13 yards versus 16, 16 and a half yards um, with a little bit more spin. So okay. maybe a little bit more stopping power, but you'd have to probably hit more shots to see if that's more or less the fact you left the face open or if yeah. actually the golf shaft's leading to that. Yeah, I, you know, through the series of not only our testing, but my testing as well, that's stayed pretty constant. You know, so I would expect that to stay open a little bit more. Now, we're not talking just blocks on every swing. It's just exactly what we saw kind of those two out of five that would leave me disappointed a little bit on the golf course. Right. So Yeah, you can kind of see just the, these two here, just, you just didn't, didn't do your similar sh shot pattern what you're used to seeing. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. So, uh, other ones here to test. You said those were your, kind of your number one and two when you've done some testing in the past. Right. And now we've got all these other premium golf shafts here to throw in the mix. Yeah. So what do you want to go with next? Uh, let's see. So we just went on the heavier side. Let's go down to uh, that recoil prototype. All right. That's kind of intriguing. Prototype 95. Yep. Definitely a little more heat to that. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I've seen your club speed crack 90 miles an hour. Yeah. Yep. Same here, it's been a long time, <laughs> long time. It didn't really feel like I was moving it. I just heard the sound and kind of picked up on ball speed was a little bit hotter. So that's five shots with the recoil prototype 95X. The one thing I noticed here is the ball speed. You had 127.8, uh, 127.7, 128.5. Mm -hmm. 
think those were, yeah, they are the highest bull speed numbers that we've seen so far. Yeah. Um, so you had noticed that efficiency, 145, 145, 143. Yeah, a couple of missits in there as well, but a little bit more club speed overall as well. Okay. It's what you would expect out of a lighter golf shaft, right? Absolutely, yeah. That felt really, really easy to move. Uh, felt nice and stable too down at the tip section. I didn't lose any to the right, so that partnered with that lighter weight. That was a really good option there. Really, really good. Yeah, you picked up a little bit more distance with that one, and uh, if we take a look at the height, even with that one that you like, I got a little bit thin, we noticed that it was actually flying the highest overall there too. I like it. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's what you would expect out of a lighter golf shaft, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, really good. And dispersion pattern. Pretty nice, pretty, pretty nice and tight there. Okay. Okay, let's uh, go with the Patterson Connect <laughs> now. So talking about Patterson a little bit, their material is a little bit different from everybody else. They have Kevlar, you know, similar to bulletproof vests, you know, that kind of material going into their shafts as well. So you'll see a lot of this kind of color scheme on the long drive tour just because they can make it lighter, but still nice and stable down at the tip section too, so. Right, and then with that Kevlar, now I believe it is the faster you swing at it, the more stable the, the tip kind of remains. Is that Absolutely. how it works? Absolutely, yep. you know, it's kind of, I don't want to draw a big comparison, but the mystery we've seen of the Autoflex shaft with the, the faster you move it, the stiffer it gets. Yep. It's kind of a similar kind of feel or profile going to Patterson too. Right, so. just not as light as the Autoflex golf shaft is. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. A little thin. A little low on the face, yeah. So Danny, talk to me a little bit about this Patterson golf shaft. Okay, so first and for foremost, feel-wise, this is the stiffest I've felt. And it's also the lightest that right. we've also tested yeah. too. So I think that Kevlar kind of tip section has something to say about Patterson shafts. I mean, it felt really boardy for sure. Um, some of those miss hits I felt more off the club head. Now results wise are pretty good. I mean, the miss hits were okay, but feel wise, I would kind of put that to the back of the bus, so to speak, on what we've tested so far. Just completely different feel, a little too boardy for, for me at least. Right, and I just feel like looking at the, at the numbers here, you can see, yeah, it's still in that 95 gram category, but you did lose just a touch club speed yep. uh, overall. Um, I did notice the first couple of shots when you hit with it, you noticed the club speed was 87.5, 87.4. Mm -hmm. Then you jump back up a little bit at the end, but first impression with this one, it was just, didn't hit it quite as well. Now the spin rate was a little bit higher, which is, Right. Interesting to see there. But Same with launch too. Yeah, yeah, launch is a little higher, spin rate's a little bit higher. Um, overall, it's, you know, it's, it's fairly straight. Mm -hmm. But you said for you, it's just a feel thing, right? Yeah, and I think after the first feel, if you jump back into the club path wise, I think this was me kind of reacting to how kind of stiff that tip section was. Yeah, that club path changed dramatically. I mean, we're more inside. I'm right. Trying to make sure that thing turns over a little bit more. So. Yeah, that is the, the furthest that you have been in to out there with your, with your club path. Yeah. Yeah, landing angle is, you know, a little bit pretty higher. Good. Pretty yeah. good there. So, yeah, a little higher overall. Um, launch a little higher, spin a little more, flying a little higher. Yep. But your club path will notice it got a little bit out of control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I felt that too. So that'll be interesting. I mean, we've got two more to kind of throw into the gauntlet here. So let's yep. see if uh, that changes my club path a little bit too. Right, well we're going back a little bit heavier here to finish up. Okay. Got the Acura golf shaft here next. This is the, the Tour 100i, correct? Correct, yep. And you'll see this kind of more so in driving irons than you know on tour, as opposed to kind of iron shafts from, for tour players. But overall, you know, looking at the torque and the specs of this, this is actually one of the softer options. So going from something really stout and stiff with uh, Patterson to something soft here, might have a feeling we might see a little bit more of that kind of face stain open or hang out to the right a little bit. So it's interesting you say it, it's softer but it's heavier. Right. Right. Sounded solid. Hello. 
I, I feel like I, I like the look of the Patterson shaft. That's pretty cool looking <laughs> shaft, but this, this blue is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm liking this. Yeah, the club path came right back just on the first move. And it. it was still high, landing angle 46.7, over 100 feet in the air. So that's the stopping power. Hmm, interesting. A little thin, not quite as high as the others, but even still, the height was still over 100 feet in the air. Yeah. I actually want to bring that up because I don't believe that you were even averaging 100 feet in the air. Now if we take a look at these, these swings here, quite a bit higher. You can see that it's noticeably higher in the height yeah. category. Yeah, so we, on average, we're 105 feet in the air, which is about seven feet higher than the next competitor. Yeah, but I would say this is moving towards the top so far. Like we've got one more sneaky one from Mitsubishi. So this is the OTI coming up. So this one's completely different too on how this one's made. So they have a technology where basically they, they take the brands themselves of, this, of the fiber, okay, of the graphite, and they kind of put them into a resin, and then they kind of wrap them just like a steel braid as well. So the resin helps bind it, but then they can change the, the profile of the shaft through how much resin or how tightly they wrap kind of that, um, the fiber itself kind okay. of in that blend. So and is that's a good. way to keep the torque down, Lower. right? Lower. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The more they can wrap it, the tighter, as well as complementing it with resins to hold it even stiffer, that it, it changes the profile completely. Okay. So. A good swing. There you go. That was probably your best swing you've made. Yeah, it didn't go as as far <laughs> left, and that it was right at 100 feet in the air. But that was the only one. You take a look at the shots here. You kind of notice there's a bit more of a fluctuation. You're losing just a little bit of club speed. Yeah. Uh, let's look at your averages. Um, so you first started out being a little bit slower, and that might be also creating a baseline to start with. Yeah. We'll notice then you kind of started peaking here around about 88 miles an hour with these four shafts. 88.6 with the Tor 100i, um, 88.8 with the Recoil pro Prototype, and yeah. then we'll notice it was 87.6. So you dropped a little bit of speed there with the, with the Mitsubishi there. Okay. Overall, uh, I mean, as far as testing, you're talking 143, 142. Very, right. very good efficiency. Yeah. But there's definitely differences in the way you deliver the club. And you can see with your tendency to have that ball go a little bit left, MMT and actually both Mrs. Bishy golf shafts were a little bit more lower on the spin and lower on the launch. Yep. And then probably lower on the height as well. You can yeah. see the height there. The yeah, dynamic um, loft was mildly different too. I mean, 19, 18, three was the ones I have. So right. a little bit lower overall for sure. Yeah, I mean, this is just showcasing what, you know, a softer tip section or softer bar section or firm and different spots of the golf shaft right. can influence the way the person delivers the golf club. Yeah. Because these are, these are all 29 degrees aloft on every single club head. We, we've Correct. got you to measure and bend to make sure they're all perfect there. Yep. But you notice here you've got a range of almost three degrees between them, dynamic loft. Now, mm -hmm. what's going to influence dynamic loft? Face angle. Face angle is going to influence that, and also where you hit on the face. It gets a little right. low on the face, it's going to launch a little bit lower, and that loft's going to be lower as well. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, you talk about like a six iron having stopping power. This Acura Tour 100 IX, I love the fact that it was 47.3 and 105 feet in the air. Same. That's pretty impressive for a six iron. Yeah, yeah I was you know, blown away by that one, you know, especially coming out of the Patterson where it felt really boardy. That felt like it had a little bit of kick to it, but it released kind of right in the, a good spot for me. So it was easy to time up, and it felt one of the greatest as well. So I like what I saw out of that. Um, you know, the biggest kind of takeaway from this is, you know, players with faster swing speeds don't always have to be playing steel, right? I think that's the future of the game of golf is sitting right here in graphite, where it right. can be easier on the bodies, we can have more fun, they can change the profile of how it bends to adapt to any swing speed or any swing, swing style for players too. So 
yes, we can definitely make a change up, but so premium, we're talking, we're talking money, right? Absolutely. What kind of cost are we talking here to put an iron set with some of these uh, premium graphite shafts? I mean, you're, you're talking anywhere from, depending on the manufacturer, anywhere from about 50 to 75 per, per club. So Extra per club? Yep. As opposed to, so that's be per club. on top of the normal cost of iron yeah. will be? Okay. So if you have, say you have an iron set where it's $1,000, now with you know, these premium materials going into them, now you're pushing potentially closer to 13, 14. But, you know, the, for me at least, I would pay that 10 times over for the results I got this year. Just being able to play longer, do this test with you and actually swing, you know, 30, 40 shots with this and be okay. Like if you gave me heavy steel, I doubt I'd be that way. You know, it was just a huge benefit. Consider it as kind of a down investment into your own game, playing longer, enjoying the game more. So I think a lot of players can benefit from graphite. Right, yeah, I mean, they, the weight, it's, it's, it's crazy to think graphite golf shafts, you know, right. they're ac some of them are actually heavier than other steel golf shafts. Yeah. Usually if I'm in a club fitting, I'll, I'll talk about how graphite's usually a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Then we start at steel, about 85, 90 grams. Yeah. Well, I can't really say that too much anymore with right. a lot of these different options because yeah. we've got golf shafts here that are graphite. Mm -hmm. Steel fibers may be more of a blend, but yeah. the other ones are fully, fully graphite golf shafts. Yep. That range in 95 to 110 grams in, yeah. in weight. Yeah, so they're dramatically lighter. Like I went from 130 to 105, so you know, a quarter of the weight got taken off, but I was still able to play the same way and got the same feedback and results just with limited tear and uh, limited tear on my body, so. Right, and that's difference. just because the, the torque's still very, very stable, the shaft's yeah. still very, very stable. Yep. It's just a lighter feel. Yeah, and torque is resistance to twist. Right, so the lower that number gets, the less it can twist on you as well. Right, So if there's twisting going on, the club face control can be an issue as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so um, yeah, you hit some great shots with these clubs. I'm looking at this dispersion pattern right here, and there's definitely a couple that, yeah, pretty, pretty good overall. I mean, Acura Tour 100i, yeah. maybe a little bit more of a tendency. You've got uh, to the right, you've got one, two, three, four. And that's not a bad thing for you. No. Um, now, it's not like it wasn't curving to the left. If we bring up one more number here, let's, uh, let's bring up the, the curve, just see where we're at Kay. overall. Okay, so when you were hitting these shots here, the Acura Tour 100i, the bull was still curving 23 feet to the left. So it's not like it wasn't curving, right. but if we look, if we compare these to, to the, all the others, you will notice here steel fiber, Acura, the least amount of curve to the left. But some of these were diving pretty far left. We're talking 45 <laughs> feet, 40 feet with right. some of these other golf shafts. And that can definitely make it a little more challenging if you're trying to control the golf ball too. 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, looking at the aftermarket shaft options we went through today, there's a clear favorite for me but just because it's a favorite for me might not be a favorite for somebody else. So that's why it's huge to come in and get fit. Take a look at graphite shafts. I mean, 60% of guys are okay with testing graphite. So again, the old kind of thought of them only being for slower swing speeds, that's not the case anymore. So let's make a change in your golf game. If you liked what you saw here today, guys, smash that subscribe button, hit a like, and let us know if you're playing any graphite iron shafts. If you are, which ones are you playing? Thanks.